Hey everybody, welcome back. I am your host, Joe JDF Foster, and today, in honor of the holidays, I'm going to do my top eight. I'm going to do my review of General Hospital's A Christmas Carol that aired today, and I'm also going to do my top eight versions of A Christmas Carol that I personally recommend or enjoy. And the hoodie I'm wearing today is actually one I got from Cafe Press a year or two, I mean a while back, and I do recommend their clothing because they last and their hoodies are extremely warm and comfortable. So go online to Cafe Press, I mean look up Cafe Press, and I recommend getting clothes from them because they're actually worth it. And you don't have to worry as much, and their prices are usually nice compared to some other places. Anyways, on to today's review of A Christmas Carol, General Hospital style. This isn't the first time General Hospital has done A Christmas Carol, but this is the first time I've seen it where they actually kept more to the story of A Christmas Carol rather than trying to change it to fit what was happening on the show at the time. Also, this episode airs a little out of date due to the impeachment hearings on Donald Trump having taken place recently and pushing back episodes so just warning you ahead of time on that also I recognize that according to this camera I look almost ghostly myself which is kind of an odd thing but anyways in the role of Ebenezer Scrooge and by the way I may not remember the characters so I may actually use the real people's names or if I don't remember the real people's names I may use their characters names in place I'm going to go over this that way uh, in the role of Scrooge you got Michael Easton who plays the doctor now but I know him best as John McBain on One Life to Live for Bob Cratchit you got Roger Howarth aka Franco um, The woman, I forget her name now, but the person who plays Tracy Quartermain would be Jacob Marley in the story. And it was a wonderful thing to have her on the show again because she's actually a really good actress and I do miss her. Because she knew how to play the Quartermain that was hard and mean, but at the same time was lovable. She was actually the closest to being like Edward. Quartermain more than a lot of people would admit. You have Eden McCoy who plays Jocelyn Jacks who plays the Ghost of Christmas Past in this story. Robert and Anna uh, Fiona Hughes and I forget what it, I want to say it's Tristan Rogers is the one who plays Robert Scorpio though I may have that wrong. But anyways, these two play in the past. They play the older versions of um, Ebenezer Scrooge's love interest that he lost, and also the, who she wound up with. Which I take it, which if I'm it was actually the guy he considered to be a friend when they were younger. The woman who plays Dr. Lisa Albrecht takes on the ghost of Christmas present in this one which to me was also kind of fitting with her character in general with the Obrecht character in general person playing Peter August or Heinrich Faison take your choice on which way you prefer his name would play Scrooge's nephew in this story and Rebecca Hertz who plays um, Elizabeth Weber and her family would be Bob Cratchit's family in this story, which is fitting again to the story and the way that things have been happening this year. And the Ghost of Christmas Future was played by um, Ava Jerome's actress, which again to me also seemed fitting as well. Okay, with the history of their character choices um, in real life, I think the better actor choices at the time this started would have been that Roger Howarth being Scrooge rather than being 
Bob Cratchit and having Michael Easton play Bob Cratchit. But with the way the story was done, I mean, also, I thought that Valentine or Nicholas would have, been, would have been good for this. Due to Val, I mean, due to Valentine being wanting to keep his daughter rich, but same time having deprived Spencer and the rest of them, I mean, the rest of the Cassadine family of the riches, because he felt he was owed this, that he earned what he had gotten. While with Nicholas, as the role of Scrooge would have made sense because he was so focused on the revenge against Valentine that it could be said that he's forgotten what the meaning of Christmas and the feelings were for it. But, after I've seen the episode, what they did for it, it actually worked out nicely. So I give credit to the GH writers for doing so. Tracy is Marley was very fitting to me because the history of the character of Tracy is that she was tough and stubborn and that she actually focused more on making a company better and how to improve the riches often for herself but also for the company so it made her look good so her sin of the chains would have been formed through the same way and with her as Marley, it made sense for that reason, because the character was more fitting to it. Also, the chemistry between Michael Easton and the person who plays Tracy Quartermain is always good to see because they actually, at least on screen, seem to work really well together. And it's enjoyable. And from the moment they actually appeared on the today's episode, talking about how they liked... Bob, I mean, how they liked Ebenezer Scrooge's characteristics and how they liked each other as friends and the best backgammon partner and all this, it actually worked out nicely for them. And you could see the chemistry between them in that way. Um, as I stated, when they actually start with the ghost, Eden McCoy as the ghost of Christmas Past was a nice touch. Because she's youthful and the dress actually looks better for her character than it would have for a quest. I mean, then, I mean, because the character is young and so it makes sense in that way. But I've always been curious about this. Why a lot of shows will show the ghost of Christmas past as being this young spirit. When the past is often represented with age. So why the ghost of Christmas present, which is often seen as an older figure, and one that's said to be fleeting, I mean, and as the line stated by the character of Ghost of Christmas Present, the ghost of Christmas present, time is fleeting for the present, as the future is to come. To me, it would have made more sense in almost every version if you'd had the ghost of Christmas past be older, spirit and one that actually made sense because the spirit had aged because it was no longer the present or the future so it had already happened whereas the ghost of christmas present was happening at that moment so the spirit would start to age which is why eden mccoy's character would have made sense eden mccoy for this role would have made sense to me or any other time that they do the Ghost of Christmas Present, have it be a younger spirit rather than the older spirit. But again, that's my personal opinion. The only time I've seen this where, the only time I can remember this where it actually happened that the Ghost of Christmas, I mean, there's very few times I've seen it where they do it where the Ghost of Christmas Past wasn't young, but the Ghost of Christmas Present was. But to me, those are often the ones where it makes the most sense. And also with the way they did today's episode, it seems like they're trying to work, and the way they've done episodes in the past few weeks, it seems like they're trying to work on Michael, you know, Michael Corinthos, Chase, and Willow. 
love triangle out and write Sasha Gilmore's I mean, write the character of Sasha Gilmore, I think was her last name. They're trying to write her out of the show with it or make her more focused towards the deception line that she's supposed to be doing with Lucy Coe. While this would be an interesting love triangle, I don't see it ending well for Michael if they do go through with the idea. And the way they did it in this episode to show their idea of this love potential love triangle is to have Willow, Chase, and Michael being the younger versions of Ebenezer Scrooge, his love interest, and the person that he considered to be a friend that he worked with. And while Ebony, while Chase being the younger version of Ebenezer Scrooge in this version was uninterested in going out and dancing and actually more focused on work, the character that Willow played, which was the love interest for Ebenezer, went off to dance with the friend of Scrooge, played by Michael Caranthos' character. I mean, played by the guy who plays Michael Corinthos. And while the love triangle would go, I mean, would be a good storyline, I don't see it ending well because Michael would end up heartbroken and it doesn't work out in that way. So if the GA triers are actually listen, actually managed to see this video, please do not go with the idea of that as a love triangle. Find a new couple to work that with work a love triangle with if you're going to. Because all you're going to do is end up making fans really angry. A lot of them anyways. Because you're destroying two couples to try and force a love triangle that nobody really wants to see or care about in that way. The idea of having Obrecht as the Ghost of Christmas present sorry I want to find a little tangent but the Ghost of Christmas present being Lisa Obrecht actually does seem fitting as when you see your character on the show Obrecht is drinking living a nice life but at the same time she's known for being manipulative and also stating her view as being truth no matter what and she has shown in recent time in the past year or at least in the past few months in the past couple of months that she does actually care about people as she has done with Nina and wanting her to actually have a good life. Something else I noticed in today's in today's episode that wasn't I mean I don't remember actually being in the story is the placement of the hand as he went from one go as Scrooge went from one ghost to the next. When it was Eden McCoy's ghost of Christmas past it was to take my hand. When it came to the Ghost of Christmas Present, it was to touch the gown that she was wearing. And then came the Ghost of Christmas Future, which he had no actual contact with. To me, this seems actual relevant, as with each ghost that passed, his likelihood of being there for the next Christmas, his, touch, his being in touch with the ghost, of the next one was representative of his chances of being there for the next actual thing. When you have the Ghost of Christmas past, you've lived it, you can have a fond memory of it, and you hold it as the highest, you can hold it in the highest regard, but it's something that you can seem more memorable about. The Ghost of Christmas present, it's not something that you hold, but it's something you're experiencing. So it's slightly out of reach, but at the same time, it's because you're in that moment. The Ghost of Christmas Future is unknown or yet to happen. And it's the final, and, and as it's a hooded figure, I think it was representative of death, it's final, and it's what would actually be the end. So... This could be seen as the Reaper, as the Grim Reaper, who's taking Scrooge as it leads him to the place where his final destination will be, and he will be bonded to those chains that he had forged in that moment, meaning in his lifetime, if he didn't change. Which also, 
no, I'm sorry, which also to me made sense for why they picked Ava Jerome, as her character is known to be to be shrouded in darkness and death as being a former mobster and having done the lies and things she's done, such as when Nicholas died, she changed her story in order to get the surgery to fix the burns that she had gotten. So she corrupted herself in that way. Something I caught today's episode, I remember hearing in the book, it talks about the ghost having a good nature, it talks about the ghost of, future, of Christmas future having a good nature. Which I see as questionable, because the figure itself, to me, represented death, which is neutral in nature. So it doesn't have good or bad. And, but with this keeping closer to the actual Dickens story, I could see the representation that it had both, and therefore the idea of the good nature being mentioned. Um, also, we get to Bob Crack when the Ghost of Christmas present takes him to see the Bob Cratchit's family, as well as his own. He visits his nephew first, and they're playing a game. This is mentioned in the story. This is mentioned in other movies. Though, one of my favorite versions of A Christmas Carol movies actually doesn't do this. They're playing this game where they try to guess, is it plant, mineral, animal, the 20 questions idea, basically. And as they get through this, as they get through it, somebody realizes the person that they're describing, because the way they're describing it isn't in the best of nature, or the best of intents behind them. So, they realize they're actually describing Scrooge. One thing it did that bothered me as I state in my overall review of this is that when they mention that it's Ebenezer Scrooge that they're describing and they say that they're right in the idea of the story Scrooge took offense to this wondering why they mocked him rather than honored him or believe or talk nicely of him but I'm guessing due to kind of time constraints on this, G.H. couldn't bring in that notice, as it did with a lot of the stuff it skipped, or that the way it moved through the story, it just did like a little terrible, little like burning away and moving on to the next scene. But we were supposed to know that, oh, it affected him in this way, or it changed him. To me, this kind of hurt the story because of that reason. But when they get to Bob Cratchit's family, Scrooge sees how little Bob's family actually has, and yet they're happy while him, while he himself had all this stuff, a big house, lots of good food, and but he was alone and sad inside, miserable inside because he was bitter towards himself, but he didn't realize it. I was initially, when I saw this, hurt that they didn't have the youngest son of Elizabeth Weber, the son known as Aiden, in this mo I mean, in this special. But this was explained in prior episodes that Aiden went to spend Christmas with Lucky, so it made sense to me why he wasn't there for this, and I understand that. But still, it seemed a little odd that you only had two of the children there which forced Tiny Tim to be who it was in this episode. Okay, now, one thing I liked about this story is that it kept closer to the actual Christmas Carol story that Charles Dickens wrote, rather than taking an odd turn and trying to fix it I mean, rather to make, ugh, rather to try to make it fit to the actual episode and the characters in the show, as it had done in the prior one that it had done. 
known as Luke's Christmas Carol, where it focused more on Luke Spencer rather than trying to keep to the Christmas Carol story. But overall, my overall grade for this episode would have been that it gets a B. Because while it kept the story, it missed some key points that were important to the story. Such as how each ghost affects Scrooge overall, or how what he sees affects him. And how his pain can actually, and how he affected others at the same time. And how he had changed over time. I mean, over the history, I mean, over the telling of the story. But, again, I'm guessing this was due to the time constraint of the show only being an hour long. Also, another thing is that, while the acting was good in this episode, some of it could have been done better to draw out the emotion of the viewer, or to make the points more important in what they were showing. Now, as compared to Luke's Christmas Carol, this one did better about keeping to the story, but overall, I would say that Luke's Christmas Carol, done back in the early 2000s, early to mid 2000s, was a better option. If you want the story of a Christmas Carol to actually have meaning to it, but this one overall, like I said, I give it a B. I can't give it an A because of, as I mentioned, some of the things it missed or left out that were important to the story and how some of the acting could have been done better. But it wasn't the worst thing I've seen. And it was actually a good take on the story of A Christmas Carol. Now, as I stated, I'm also going to do the top eight versions of A Christmas Carol that I enjoyed. Number eight, Smallville's, I mean, the... CW show Smallville did an episode called A Lexmas Christmas or A Lexmas Carol. Sorry, I had to clean that. Sorry, I had to get that. It was bothering me. I don't remember exactly how they phrased it, but basically it was the idea that Lex Luthor got to take on the idea of A Christmas Carol where he had the chance to change. Spoiler in this is that Lex chose the darkness because from what he saw in the story, when he chose the goodness, he ended up losing everything he cared about. And it, and while he was happy, he ended up in sadness. Well, he wanted to prevent the sadness from happening to him and having that experience. So what had made him happy, he ended up destroying and taking on a darker turn in order to prevent it from happening. And number seven on the list, this particular episode of A Christmas Carol as done by G.H. Like I said, as this story was good, it missed some key points and it could have been better in the way it was done, but it's still one of the better versions I've seen. Number six, Another old TV show that used to run on what was known as the WB and eventually became the CW was a show called Popular, which was a high school story deal. Well, when it did this, they did an episode that of a Chris. They did an episode where they did a Christmas Carol for them, where it showed the change in a character and how it went from being this evil, mean character overall to ending up having a very good outlook at least for a couple of at least for a few episodes following this but it showed how they changed overall and they were actually good to some extent this one was good because of the way it took a high school turn for it and showed how even in high school you can have characters that are mean and grouchy and need help but can also be capable of change and becoming better people. Number five on the list, 
the actual Charles Dickens story of A Christmas Carol. Yes, I probably should have made this higher as this is a Christmas Carol based thing, but to me, A Christmas Carol the story was good when I was younger because it featured ghosts and it talked about Christmas and it gave feelings of goodness. But as I got older, the story got a little stale. Because while it's good, it seems a little date. It is dated in the way that it speaks and the things that it discusses. Number four. A while back, ABC Family, or what's known as Freeform, did a version of A Christmas Carol where they did. Where they took Christina Milian and. Ashley Benson, who had been on the TV show Pretty Little Liars, and put them in this movie called Christmas Cupid. Now, while many may see it, the title, what like I did, as seen more of a romantic thing, and romance does play a part in this story, in this version of it, but it doesn't. I mean, but this one actually still fits more to the story of A Christmas Carol. And how one person saw they needed to make their life rich and thought that would make them happy. And eventually learns that money isn't what makes everything best. It does help, but it shouldn't be your sole focus. Humanity and caring and think, I mean, other things like that should actually be the focus of your life. Sorry, I got caught up and froze in my head there for a moment. But this one does more of a comedy take on it, and it works out really nicely. Which also brings me to number three, continuing the comedies on this, is the actual movie that Bill Murray did called Scrooged, where it tried to keep its focus on the Christmas Carol story, and talking about how Scrooge started out as a nice young kid, but basically time had warped him into the person he had become, and he became this monster, and things didn't work out as well for him, and showed him going through the same idea of A Christmas Carol, and it actually seems close to it. But, it being a Bill Murray movie, you can guess, this one had a lot more comedy to it and did really well at it. It knew how to mix the comedy into the story, and yet, at the same time, not take away from the drama and the actual story of A Christmas Carol in the process. The Tiny Tim in this one gets changed a little bit, but it actually fits better with the story and makes a lot of sense. Number two. A Christmas Carol. I mean, a Muppets Christmas Carol. This one actually had the Muppets where it had Rizzo, the Rat, and um, Gonzo doing the story narration rather than actually being in the story itself. But, at the same time, I say if you watch my previous video where I talked about my top 10 Christmas movies. I went over some details about this, about these movies. It and Scrooge both and told all the facts I could that I thought were interesting about it. But The Muppet Christmas Carol, this one also does well at keeping the comedy in there, but this one actually focused more on keeping the sadness and the drama and the lessons that you're supposed to learn from A Christmas Carol in it while having moments of comedy, while it had its moments of comedy and things thrown in. Number one, and as far as I can see, this one, well, this one will be my favorite until they can come up with a better one to match it. ABC, during the early 2000s, General Hospital's Luke's Christmas Carol. At least, that's what I call it. I'm not sure if that was the actual name for it or not. But with this, Luke had 
basically become depressed around the seat around the holiday and he had become angry and bitter and was being mean and trying to avoid everybody he cared about but I mean he was even avoiding his own family like Lucky had invited him over to the families for Christmas and he was so depressed and angry with himself that l he told Lucky there was no point to Christmas that they shouldn't do it and that there was no reason to celebrate well with Luke's bitterness and things he gets his visit from the ghost of Christmas he gets his visit from the ghost and as with all the Christmas Carol stories he comes to see the error of his ways but at one point one of the things that made it interesting to me is that when it did Luke's future it talked about, and yes, this is a spoiler for it, when the Ghost of Christmas Future shows him a potential future for it, it shows a man who's lying in the streets who had drunk himself to death on the holiday season. Well, Luke's, en Luke's enemy, so to speak, Scott Baldwin, told him to write it off as an anonymous drunk who just passed away. Because that's the way he this person would have wanted it. Well, when they go to the more, well, when they go to the more to find out who this poor soul is, Luke sees it himself and realizes what he's done was wrong and that he needed to change. But also, during the Ghost of Christmas, but earlier on in the episode when we do the Ghost of Christmas present, we find out why Luke has become so angry at the season. Whereas when he was younger, yeah, he wasn't happy, but he had his sister, I mean, he wasn't overjoyed with it because of the life they were living. They had an angry father who was abusive, who made their life a nightmare, especially around Christmas. Then you find out with Luke and Bobby's past, and how, while they weren't happy with it, at least Luke had his sister, and they cared for each other, so there was love there. But when it came to the Ghost of Christmas present, we learn why Luke is so angry and bitter. It's because he blames himself for Laura being in a coma, even though it wasn't his fault. Luke's so angry and bitter towards himself that he doesn't know what to do. And he blames himself, and he drinks, and he thinks it's better he avoids his family because, from what I can tell, the Luke Spencer character in general thought that if he stayed in one place too long, he would get too bored and he would start to drink too much and become this angry person and turn into his father, which to me was actually Luke Spencer's worst fear. It wasn't being forgotten. It wasn't being the most hated person on earth even. It was that he would become Timothy Spencer and that scared him more than anything, so he traveled in order to make sure that didn't happen. But at the same time, he didn't realize how much he hurt his family by leaving every time. And, well, with the Ghost of Christmas present, when that one leaves and you get to see Luke Spencer crying and feeling bad, you also get to see what happens next with the Ghost of Christmas future and how things turn out for him if he didn't change, if he doesn't change. But again... Luke's Christmas Carol from General Hospital is, like I said, I don't know if that's the actual name they gave to it or not, but that one is my favorite version of A Christmas Carol. Because while it would now also be considered a, it still seems relevant to me in the way that it's done. Leave me a comment on what you thought of my review, if you agreed with it or not. And also, what was your favorite version of A Christmas Carol that you heard growing up or even present, or even in the present. Also, leave a comment as to what you think my upcoming, an upcoming video I'm going to do should be about. I read the comments and I actually look forward to knowing what anybody who watches thinks. As I will take them under advisement and actually consider them, and probably will end up doing it. If I can actually find a way to discuss it. So, 
happy holidays and Merry Christmas to those that are celebrating the holiday. To those that celebrate Han I mean Kwanzaa or Hanukkah or some other holiday. Happy holidays to you. May you be well and look forward to my next and I look forward to making my next video and hopefully it'll be something that you all have asked for.